considering the circumstances. Yeah. I've been worried sick about you in here. You're innocent. How can they do this to you? We're gonna get through this. Is there anything that I can do for you or bring you anything? You brought me what I want most. You're the only thing I've been able to think about since I've been in here, Sarah. Oh, I love you so much. Are you nervous? I'm nervous, excited, anxious, you name it, I'm it. Oh, come on, you've been on Melinda's show before? Yes, and you know what happened. Well, this time you're up against Spring, not Randy Stone. That's true, but Randy Stone, at least I knew where he was coming from. Spring Skies, the epitome of the smiling shark. You don't know whether she's going to swim by harmlessly or turn around and attack you in the neck. She's so incredibly phony, Mary Lynn. And I'm just so happy that you've been nominated for the Daisy Award. Of course, I know that I'm going to win, but it's nice to know that I'll have some competition. I want to just slap her around in that face when she said that to me. Well, maybe she won't be smiling and laughing any longer when you walk away with the award. Well, I'm not so worried about winning the Daisy. For me, at least. I I'd like to win it because I think it would do good things for the show and for Bo. I know that we'll probably win best show and best costumes and best writing. And you're going to win for best actress. Well, I'd be a lot more confident about that if Spring right, Sky wasn't in the running. Uh, Megan's already here, I see. And over here's our makeup table. Ah. Well, Mary Lynn, you're going to have to fasten your seatbelt. This show is in for a bumpy flight. See, I told you my baby isn't dead, Larry. That's not your baby, honey. That's Alicia. No, it's baby. with Stephen. Dad, you tell him that this is Stephen. Tell him whose baby this is. It's Gary Grand, isn't it? No. Or... Yes, it is. See, now put the baby down. Uh, no. This is my baby. I don't care what any of you Linda, say. This please. is my you baby. Gotta, you gotta believe me. No. A mother knows her own child. Give the baby to me. No. Before you harm no, him. I would never harm my own son. He's would not I? your son, Brenda. Please. He is mine. Darling, you've been through a, a tremendous no. ordeal. You fought so hard to bring bring this child into the world. And he fought too, but Brenda, he didn't make it. It's terrible, it's sad, but he just didn't I... make it, Brenda. I want you to look at this baby. Look at him. He's mine. Brenda. He knows. I have never lied to you in my life. I'm not lying to you now. This is not your baby. It isn't? No. Please, darling, put him back in the bassinet.
Just relax, Megan. Don't let spring get to you, okay? Yeah, well, she already has. That smile that I was telling you about. Why isn't Max here yet? Megan, you look marvelous. Why, I love this outfit. Thank you, Spring. Is this an original or just another blue light special? Yes, well, there are still some of us around, Spring, whose fashion consciousness is not dictated by announcements over a loudspeaker. Well, it's so you. It's bold. It's overstated. It matches your personality perfectly. Well, at least my outfit makes a statement. Meaning? Meaning that pink, well, <laughs> pink is a very spring color, shall we say. But I think that your outfit asks more questions than making statements. Questions like, who am I, where am I, and what am I doing here in the first place? Well, honey, if you're looking for answers, you just listen to my acceptance speech. Oh, yes, are you planning on winning something? Ladies, could I say something here? Of course, Melinda. After all, it's your show. Oh, thank you. I was beginning to wonder. Mm -hmm. The first thing I would like to warn you both of is that this show is live. Is that going to be a problem for you? Why would that be a problem for me? Well, it's just that your reputation for retakes precedes you. Yeah. You think you can get it on the first go-round? Uh-huh. Oh, that's uh -huh. funny, coming from someone who's been around the block so often. The second thing that I would like to point out is that the topic of this show is strictly limited to the Daisy Awards and who deserves to win them. Yes, who well, that's that was like not an say. opening, ladies. That was simply a reminder to please stick to the topic. Now, we have a couple of minutes before the show, so why don't you two actresses just shake hands and may the best actress win, huh? Mm. Oh, Flaming Fire, Jungle Red. And I've had two years to grow them. Sorry, Mr. Buchanan. I can see how much you miss the pretty lady, but we'll say I've got to keep you two separate. Okay. Sorry. Didn't say anything about holding hands. This is all going to be all right. I'm worried about the preliminary hearing. Sarah, that's going to be a snap. I'm innocent. I did not tamper with the engine in Michael Grant's car, so John is going to convince the judge of that, and then I am out of here. Come on. Nice try. I need a, more than just a phony little grin to cheer me up. I'm sorry. I'm trying to be optimistic, but between Herb's evidence and Michael Grant's personal crusade to get know, you convicted, I... This, this evidence seems unbeatable. Consider this fact. If I was planning to murder Michael Grant and make it look like a, a complete accident, then why would I leave a perfect set of fingerprints on the hey, master honey, cylinder? That... They're going to say it's because you got careless. No, no, it's because I was set up. Enough talk about me, okay? Let's talk about you. Did you miss me last night? <laughs> We're gonna be talking about you again. <laughs> well, so what? So what? Go on. Did you miss me? Was it uh, cold, lonely without me? No, not really. You had about three seconds to explain that one. Uh, one, two. Tuggy slept with me last night, though. You mean you spent an entire night scratching some other lucky dog behind the ears, Sarah? No, I didn't sleep very well. I didn't sleep well. I had, I had nightmares. And... That's what you get for sleeping with dogs. It causes you nightmares. It causes you anxiety attacks. No, I'm serious. I was really terrified last night. I'll be honest with you, I've had a few uh, anxiety attacks of my own. But I just keep thinking about how much I love you. See, it's like I've been given a second chance in this life. And second chances, they just don't come all that often these days. That's why I'm sure that this judge is going to decide in my favor. You sound pretty confident. That's because I have you. Sorry, Miss Gordon, but your time is up. I'll be home for dinner. Sir. 
Left him in the dressing bedroom. Oh, well, thank you. Why don't you let me drive? Why, because if I got where I put my keys, you don't think I'm capable of driving? Darling, you were up half the night in a meeting with John and Lovelace, and when you came to bed, you didn't even sleep. I will get plenty of sleep when the charges against my son are dropped. You're not very confident that's going to happen, are you? Well, we keep banging our heads against that master cylinder. How on earth did Bo's fingerprints wind up on that thing? I don't know. Fortunately, neither does Bo. And the real kicker is that this eyewitness Herb Callison has claims that Bo was at the Landview Grand Hotel garage at Michael's car. But how can they prove that Bo tampered with that car? I mean, there were dozens of other people in that garage. This is a preliminary hearing. Herb Callison doesn't have to prove anything at this point. All he has to do is convince the judge to let him take it to trial. And I'll be damned if I'm going to let him get that far. Darling, I know everything that is going to be OK. No person on this earth would think that Bo Buchanan is capable of premeditated murder. I am going to tell you something, Renee. If I ever get my hands on the person that set Bo up for this fall, by God, Herb Callison will have a murder case to take to trial. Excuse me, sir. There's a phone call from a Dr. Pomerantz. He's on his way here from the airport. Doctor who? Oh, damn. I just remembered I arranged with him to fly in from Zurich. Who is he? Oh, he's an eye specialist. I was worried about Austin. And uh, when I found out he had trouble with his eyes. And you flew him all the way from Zurich to examine his eyes. Why not? He's my nephew. He deserves the best medical attention available. The only problem is now, I forgot when the good doctor was arriving. I, I can't see him now. Darling, don't worry about it. You go on down to the courthouse, and I'll handle everything here. Oh, thank you, Renee. You're welcome, and good luck. Thank you. Uh, Nigel, would you tell Austin that I'd like to see him, please? Oh, and when the good doctor arrived, ask him if uh, he'd like to freshen up after his trip. Yes, ma'am. There's something else that I, I have to tell you. I'm sorry, Mr. Buchanan, but I can't give you any more time. I mean, this is a jail, not a restaurant. Could you say that again? Pardon? What you just said to me. Would you just repeat it, please? Why? Let's just say it again. But this is a jail, not a restaurant. God, that's perfect. I, there's no, there's no bull, there's no fancy prose or anything. You get right to the point. And you, look, God, I wish I had dialogue writers on Fraternity Row that could put words like that into an actor's mouth. Fraternity Row would be at the top of the ratings. Sarah, did you hear him just now? Yeah. This guy has a natural gift for the English language. Yeah, I mean, when you said it, you just got right to the point. What's your name, son? Uh, Ian Spencer. Great name. You ever do any writing, Ian? Uh, well, yeah. Um, when I graduated the police academy, a couple of guys and I got together and we wrote a skit for our uh, commencement exercises. And I'll bet it was funny, right? I'll bet you had them rolling in the aisles. Am I wrong? <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> okay, Ian, I want to get straight to the point. I could use a man with your talent on fraternity row. And what the heck, we all know that I'm going to beat this rap anyway, right? Bo's innocent, uh, Ian. Uh, look, we can't decide that, ma'am. Yeah, let's leave that up to the judge. What the hell? You know, Ian, really, I, uh, I really plan on doing a prison story on Fraternity Row. It's a soap. Now, what I'm going to need is somebody that I can trust. Somebody who really knows all the inner workings of a prison. I can't rely on my writers to do that because, naturally, they don't have the life experience. What I'm going to need is what we call an outside consultant. Somebody who knows the real dope, but they also have that sensitivity for the English language. Somebody just like you. Me? Yeah, of course. It's going to be part-time work. Really, it's not going to pay that much. You would be on the crawl. What's a crawl? It's the credits that roll at the end of the show. The names that go by oh, on the yeah, television screen. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, I, I, I'd be into that. You know, I could be a real big help for you. Yeah, I, I'm sure you could. 
Just wish I had more time to talk to Sarah. That way I could tell her exactly what I want. She could go and talk to the writers. Look, look, you, why don't you take all the time you need? I mean, um, I'll just stand over there until you're done. No, really? Yeah. I think you saw a snake oil and love potion in another life. No, I'm going to make sure that y that young man right there gets his chance in the spotlight. You know, some people would consider this a bribe. No, no. We are going to do that, uh, that story, that prison story on Fraternity Row. I'm going to need help. There he is. I also need some more time with you. Yeah. It kills me to see you leave here with such a sad face. Please smile. See? Oh, good. Because that's the most important job I have in this life, is to make you smile. So what did you want to tell me? I wanted to tell you that no matter what happens, I'm going to stand by you. Nothing is going to happen. No, listen to me, all right? There's a chance that you could be convicted and sentenced. There's a chance that it may snow in August, too. No, I, I, I just... I want you to know that if that happens, and if you're sent to prison, I'm going to stand right by you. So you're going to be there when I come hobbling out of my cane, out of prison at the end of my sentence? Yeah. You're serious? Yeah. No matter what, I'm going to wait for you. I don't know how many times I have to tell this to you to make you believe this, but nobody is going to send me to prison. I love you. Oh. I better go. writers in this world, huh? And now, Ian Spencer. God, what a country, huh? <laughs> Dan. Dan, I have to go now. <clears throat> what, Gabriel? It's Alicia's funeral this afternoon. I want to be there for Michael. Sure, sure, I understand. Do you have any more questions? No, there's nothing I can think of at the moment. Thank you for your time. Barb? Yes, Doctor. Can you get your hands on every baby's birth record in this unit? Well, yes, of course. Why? Well, I know it's just a hunch, but there just might be something to Brenda's belief that one of the babies in here is hers. Denial is the first stage of grief, Doctor. I realize that, but if there's the slightest chance that she's right, I mean, if there's a possibility of a mix-up, I think we should match the footprints with the baby's birth records just to make sure. I'll get right on it. I'll have them called up. All right, I'll check back with you as soon as I finish my rounds. Hi, Bob. Listen, would you please send up all the baby birth records right away? Bye-bye. Excuse me, Chris. Oh, Miss Medina. Uh, oh, my goodness. Are you all right? Uh, well, here, come sit down. A little dizzy. Yes. Oh. <laughs> I wonder if, would you mind getting me a glass of water? Well, I certainly will. You stay right here. I'll be right back. <sighs> think, Gabrielle. Think. Oh, Dan knows that you are the last one to see Alicia's baby alive. If he discovers that Garrick really is Brenda's baby, then he'll put two and two together. He'll know I'm the one who switched them. Think. Welcome back to View on Landview. If you're just joining us as our two guests today, we have two lovely and talented ladies who are both up for the coveted award of daytime television, The Daisy, and they're both up for Best Actress on my right. I have Megan Gordon, who plays Roxanne on Fraternity Row. And to my left, I have uh, Spring Sky, who plays Rita Payne on... What's the name of the show? All or Nothing. All or Nothing. Thank like you, Melinda. <laughs> now, as I was saying before we went to commercial, uh, the character of Rita Payne is entirely of my own making. And just a minute now. I mean, don't the writers create the characters? Oh, well, you could hardly call what they gave me to work with a character. It was thin and shallow. It was nothing but flesh and bones. <laughs> I'm sure the writers are going to be thrilled to hear that. But you see, I gave Rita depth. I gave the character meaning, insight, humor, compassion. Uh, you see, before I came along, Rita Payne was just 
oh, so many words on a blank sheet of paper, but now she is a, a living, breathing human being filled with love and the milk of human kindness. Uh-huh. So, Megan, um, I understand that you're now being asked to play two different parts. Yes, that's right. And I'd like to mention right now that the character of Roxanne and that of Ruby Bright were created by brilliant writers as well as a very brilliant producer. Well, that is the first time I ever heard you call Randy Stone brilliant. Well, I wasn't referring to Randy Stone, Spring. Well, I thought he created Roxanne. No, you see, with Bo Buchanan took over the show, he helped me create Wait a minute, wait a minute. Bo Buchanan is this brilliant producer you've been referring to? Yes. <gasps> and what's so funny about that? Oh, my dear. Well, everyone knows Bo Buchanan has been arrested for murder. I mean, if that is the quality of your creative team, I'd say you're in big trouble. Bo is innocent, and the jury will acquit him. Uh, Megan, you can kiss your storyline goodbye. I mean, it's hardly gotten off the ground. What could you possibly know about this ruby bright person? Unless, of course, they let Bo send you character sketches from prison. How dare you slander Bo, and especially on live oh, television. It's, it's only slander when it isn't ladies. true. It isn't true. Uh, Bo is not guilty. Megan, wake up and read the newspapers. Bo Buchanan is sure to be tried and convicted for the murder of Alicia Grand, and you know it. Oh, you scheming no-talent witch. I could just take your little scrawny little, little neck and... You oh, are a mad guy. Do you Thank know that? Much, uh, for joining us and please tune in tomorrow when our guest will be Phyllis King who is the author of Good Hygiene at the Workplace. <laughs> okay, we're off the air. No, absolutely know it! Miss Gordon, oh. not only will you lose the Daisy Award, but you and Fraternity Row are going to be the laughing stock of the entire daytime industry. And you can take that to the bank! You want to see me, Renee? Oh, yes, Austin. Is this about Cousin Bo's hearing? I mean, you tell me, has that judge finally seen the light of day and thrown them charges right out the window where they belong? Darling, the hearing should be starting any time now. Ace is down at the courthouse. I cannot tell you how worried I am about Cousin Bo. I mean, I know what it's like inside prison. I deserve to be there, but Cousin Bo, my God. Darling, I appreciate your concern, and it really speaks well for uh, you that you are troubling over Bo when you've got enough troubles of your own. What do you mean? Asa told me about the problems you've been having with your eyesight. I surely wish he hadn't. I mean, it's not all that serious. Austin, don't you go shrugging this off. And don't you be angry with Asa for having told me. Asa and I are very concerned about you, and we want to do what we can to help you. Well, it's just not, it's just not such a big thing to get all riled up about. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll let Dr. Pomerantz decide how big a thing of it is. He is a specialist. A well-known specialist in degenerative eye diseases. Nigel, Ace has had him flown in all the way from Zurich to examine your eyes. Now, wait a minute. Whoa, whoa, Renee, please. Now, this is hardly the time or the place to be conducting when such a... When it comes to your eyesight, young man, there is no time like the present to ensure its well-being. So if you will just give me a few minutes of your time, we'll see just how far your disease has progressed. I'm sure she'll come to accept the death of her son as soon as she gets over the initial shock. Do you think that uh, there's anything to it? Do you think there's been a mix-up? Well, I think it's right that Dan is having me double-check these records. Oh. And you'd be able to tell if there was a switch through the records? Oh, yes. All you have to do is check all the footprints of all the babies here against the ones on the records. And little Stevens, his records would be still around? Still oh, yes. Well, at least until they decide whether or not to do an autopsy or not. <sighs> Excuse me. Hey, Brenda, take this. What is it? It's just something to help you sleep. I don't want to sleep. I want my baby. Why are you doing this to me, Larry? Why do you keep telling me he's dead? Because it's true, Brenda. You've got to accept it. No, it is not true. God does not take a healthy baby away from his mother, and that baby is healthy. You said so yourself. Steve is getting better. Brenda, I'm as surprised as anyone that he took a, a turn for the worse, especially in the, uh, with the progress he'd been making. But we can find out why. You, you just got to give us permission for the autopsy. No. No. 
I am taking that baby home with me. I am going to take him up and show him where his father was going to build a house outside of La Landview, up on a mountain. Oh, I, he needs to know that. He needs to know how much his father loved him and how much he cared for him. Brenda, stop you, it. Listen to me. Listen. Me. Brenda, you can't take him home. Listen no. to me. He's gone. He's dead. He is not dead. Brenda, I hear about Stephen. No. Right about it now. I showed him he was wrong. I held my precious little child in my arms. And still he told me that that wasn't Steve, that he was gone. And then he made me leave the nursery, and he's not going to let me see Stephen again. I don't understand. I don't understand why he doesn't realize that that baby needs to go home. He needs to be with his mother, and he needs her love and, her, and, and attention. He's getting all the love and attention he needs right now from someone who loves him just as much as you do. What are you talking about? I know how hard this is on you, losing Steve and now losing your son. I haven't lost my son. I know exactly where he is. I just held him in my arms. He's in I... Steve's arms now. And I'm sure they're very happy together and taking care of each other. Brenda, I am trying to help you. Yeah? Well, you're worse than Larry. I don't understand what you're... Why are you doing this to me? What about you telling me how much you love that baby, how you were going to take care of him, teach him things, love him, care for him? You Brenda. remember that? That is your brother's son, for God's sake, Max. How can you abandon him now? I am not abandoning him. All right. That's good. Then you help me convince Larry that that son belongs to me, that that's my baby, all right? Or what, you, you don't care? Damn it, Brenda, of course I care. From the first second I laid eyes on that boy, it was like seeing a piece of Steve. I loved him. I wish to God I could snap my fingers and bring him back, but I can't. And you can't either. Brenda, you gotta face this. You're going to have to be strong enough to cry over your losses, to cry over your son, and to go on with your life. Don't. Just. Brenda. Just. I need to be alone right now. Brenda, please. I said, leave me alone. Leave me alone. Well, like I told you all, you're making a big fuss about absolutely nothing here. But perhaps my examination will prove otherwise. Look, <laughs> I've been examined a whole ton, all right? I don't need to have some specialist go poking around inside of me. No way. Thank Who you. examined you? I don't know. A whole passel of doctors. And uh, what were their findings? <sighs> that I'm going blind, okay? And there ain't nothing that nobody can do a thing about it. So why do you waste your examination on a helpless case like myself? Were the doctors able to identify your condition? Well, yeah, sure, of course. But don't ask me to remember what the heck it was, because I, I don't know, I forget. You've forgotten the name of the disease that is slowly taking away your eyesight? Yes, yes, that's right. It, it was very long and it was very complicated. It was probably something in Latin or something like that. Pupilo iliodegenerius, perhaps. Well, yeah, sure. Something like that. Well, that's a very serious condition. I really think that he should let me examine him. I agree. Oh, Austin, please, please let him look at your eyes. Listen, I know how to handle this, okay? I have accepted my fate, and I do not need you bringing in some specialist trying to poke and prod at me all over again. Austin, Ace and I are trying our very best to help you. If you're trying your best to do your best for me, then I'd say you just best keep your nose out of my business. I don't understand. Why is he so unwilling to have us help him? Because he doesn't need your help. Poor mine. But, Doctor, we can't abandon him. I didn't have an opportunity for a thorough examination, but there I saw no sign of dilation, 
and no other symptoms of blindness. Besides, there is no such condition known as uh, bulio ilio degeneris. <laughs> I made it up. Uh, Lordy, are you, are you telling me? It is my opinion that whatever his reasons may be, that young man is faking his imminent blindness. Hey, guys. Oh, how's it look? Well, it would look a whole hell of a lot better if Herb hadn't withheld evidence from us until the last moment. What do you mean? We just found out his eyewitness is Gabrielle Medina. What? She's the one that claims she saw you in the parking garage. How come Herb kept this such a big secret? Well, obviously, he didn't want us to question her, pressure her. Yeah, but the, the longer that Michael Grant has to coach her, the more believable that story she's going to tell is going to be. Well, don't worry. I think I can take care of her credibility. That shouldn't be a problem. I mean, after all, everybody knows that she and Michael Grant are thick as thieves. And plus, the fact that she's willing to testify against you could confirm your suspicion that Michael's the one behind this whole case against you. I think my, Michael believes that I'm guilty. I don't think he's the one that set me up. As much as he hates me, he loved his wife. He wouldn't risk hurting her. Damn it, I, I wish the pieces would fit together on this. Well, Bo, the biggest piece still missing is how your fingerprints ended up on the master cylinder in Michael's car. Bo, well, listen, I know we've been over this before, but do you remember handling any master cylinder, any master cylinder whatsoever recently? John, I've racked my brain, and I, I can't remember anything. Well, gentlemen, we better get to the hearing. Time waits for no man. Certainly not Judge Miller. I just didn't think she'd stoop so low. Well, it was a low blow. Well, you know, that's the last thing that Bo needs right now. The last thing he needs is, is the whole television industry thinking that he's a murderer. There's got to be some way that I can soften the effect of Spring's accusations. You're starting to sound like the unofficial spokeswoman for Bo Buchanan and for Timothy Rowe. Now, that's not a bad idea. What? OK. Now, what I have got to do is convince the whole industry that Spring is wrong about Bo. And the only way that I can do that is to win the Daisy Award. Now, you know and I know that Bo is not guilty of murder, right? Right, right. And the jury will prove that. Of course, in the meantime, I'm sure that Spring will do everything in her power to badmouth Bo and to discredit him in the show, just so she can win that little Daisy Award. So what I need to do is throw myself into my storyline, work as hard as I can, and then snatch that Daisy Award right out from Spring's rhinoplasty. I'll get the Daisy Award. Bo will get his credibility back. Sounds like a pretty good idea. Yeah. Yeah, except for just one thing. Spring is right. I have no grip on my character right now. With my luck, I would try something that would backfire, and I would end up embarrassing myself and everyone else on the show. Come on, Megan. You are a very talented actress. I'm sure you can find some way to bring life into Ruby Bright. You really think so? I know so. Trust me. <sighs> Look, um, I've got to run, okay? But will you let me know if you need my help? Yeah. Thanks. Okay, I will. Bye. Talented, huh? Well, this is going to take a lot more than just talent. A lot more. Maybe I should take off and come back later. Brendan, right, you feeling mm -hmm. better? Both of you, I need to be alone. Brendan, I, I think you should do what she asks. I can't leave her like this. Come on. I think she needs to be alone right now, so it's best. I double-checked all the records and everything matches. There was no mix-up the night baby Stephen died. Well, thanks for humoring me. Well, I'm glad to know there was no mistake as well. It was worth the effort. At least we know now for sure. Yeah, now we're going to have to help Brenda accept that. Oh, doctor. What? Um, I was wondering if the if uh, baby Grand is, is able to leave the hospital. Sure, sure. I don't see why not. Uh, give, me, give, give me his chart. I'll, right I'll fill out the orders for his release. Well, Mr. Grand will be glad of that. Yeah, well, when he gets back from his wife's funeral, will you tell him that he's free to take his child home? So it's such a tragedy, you know? I mean, all that pain and suffering from one automobile accident, if it was an accident. You know what the intruder said? He said that somebody sabotaged those brakes, and all the evidence points to Bo Buchanan. You know, first of all, it is beyond my comprehension that anyone, especially you, nurse, would believe such a rag like that. 
Secondly, I don't want you spreading that dirt around the hospital. You got that? What the hell kind of justice is that? I mean, how the hell can this judge continually refuse us bail? No, her did a masterful job of building a preliminary case against both. The judge had no choice but to grant a trial. Doesn't mean you're guilty, it just means the DA has enough evidence to get his day in court. That evidence. That evidence, I think, was just a bunch of mumbo jumbo. I mean, we really, it was a bunch of maybes and, and, and what if. Don't worry, Carla. We have enough time to build our case. Now, look, what we're going to do is postpone the trial. I want to go to trial as soon as possible. I beg your pardon. I want the earliest possible trial date. Bo, Bo, you can't do that. Now, come on, we've got evidence of herbs that we have to refute. We've got to find the guy that's trying to frame you on this. Herb started a snowball rolling down a mountain. Now, I don't want to get buried under a, an avalanche of adverse publicity. It's going to kill any chance we have at an acquittal. Bo, listen, I'm telling you, the longer you wait, the better your chances will be. And I'm telling you, I'm not going to rot in jail while Sarah and my family suffer. We understand how you feel about your family, Bo, but this is a murder trial we're talking about. John, I know what's at stake here. But I know I'm innocent. I'm going to prove that. Plus, I'm going to find the guy who's trying to frame me for Alicia Grant's murder. Damn that judge! And damn Herb Callison! And damn everyone who conspired to keep my son in jail! Oh, Lordy, don't tell me Herb managed to convince the judge that he really does have a case against Bo? He sure as hell did. Not only that, that judge will not let my son out of bail. That means Bo stays in jail till this thing is settled. Have you heard in your life heard anything so, so ridiculous? Yes, darling, as a matter of fact... What, what are you taking me? Why are you whispering like please, that? Please, please, I don't want Austin to hear. Hear what? It's Dr. Pomerantz's opinion that Austin is faking his blindness. What? Austin refused to let him give him a thorough examination, and the doctor said he had no symptoms to support his claim. He even made up a disease, and Austin said, yes, yes, that was what the doctors told him he had. Why, why is this whole world going plumb local on me? Why would Austin say he's going blind when he isn't? <sighs> Darling, I wish I knew. That snake in the grass is going to wish he never stepped foot in my house. No, please, darling, don't now, go jump don't you, any don't, conclusion. Don't lecture me. I'm hearing that boy first, hear me? He's trying to pull something, Renee. And I swear I'm going to find out what it is. And I'm going to stop it. Pronto. Uh, Miranda, hi. Why shouldn't you be in your room resting? Um, Barbara, I was just wondering if I might be able to spend a little bit of time here with all oh, the babies. Oh, Brenda, I don't know. Please. I, I, I won't take long, and if I start feeling tired or something, I'll go back to my room. Well, I'm not concerned about that. Brenda. Barbara, listen, I'm not going to make another scene. I just need to spend a little bit of time here with these beautiful babies, okay? Since you're a member of the staff, and knowing what you've gone through, I don't think it'll do any harm for you to stay here. Thanks. <laughs> I'll just be a while, okay? No problem. I'm just about to feed all these little boys and girls anyway. Yes. You know who I am, don't you? Yes. And I know who you are. Looking good, Ruby. Looking very, very good. Now all I have to do is walk a thousand miles in your shoes and figure out exactly who you are. Well, you know I'm a gambler, do you know that? Yes, I knew that. That was the first thing I decided about you. And that's why we're going to Atlantic City. So what do you say? We rent us a big, fat limo and go down there in style. Yeah, sure, but I was kind of thinking that, uh, maybe we take the bus, you know? Ones where you get a roll of quarters. The bus? Well, you're the boss. A bus it is. Okay, let's blow this joint and hit the tables. Thank you.
playing is over, do you hear me? I must have been blind not to see through your act. But now I have, and I will not be taken advantage of by the likes of you any longer. Place your bets, ladies and gentlemen. Thousand dollars on 13, please. Very good, sir. Make it a good spin, we It's my last two G's. Come down here in the seat right next to Marco Day. 